This is Allison Smith from the IVRVoice.com. I am a professional telephone voice, and this is one of my presentations, which I delivered at IT Expo. It's called IVR Customer Disservice, Ways in Which Open Source Telephony Can Stop Creating a Frustrating Caller Experience. So caller frustration has always been and continues to be a massive problem. And I've always maintained that the design of the phone system is a key part of what leads to customer frustration and what can ultimately alleviate that frustration with good design. The dream, of course, is happy customers making their way through the IVR effortlessly and left with a solution to their issue and and a positive impression of the company. Big sigh. We can dream, can't we? So Yu Zhu, who works for the Carlson School of Management, came forth with this quote, which is quite profound. Companies deliberately employ inefficient, multi-step processes, hoping that you will give up so they can avoid giving you a replacement or a refund. As a collateral benefit, companies avoid the labor costs of hiring people who might be able to solve your problem. In addition, He said, if you have this tiered design, you can definitely improve your profit and you can definitely tick people off in the process. Pretty heady words, and it's a pretty big admission that sometimes IVRs are deliberately designed to save money and create problems for the caller. He went on to say, you call them and most of the time you don't talk to a real person. You wait in the queue because they claim they have lots of calls. Maybe they say they'll call you back in an hour. You finally talk to somebody and they say, I don't have the authority to resolve your issue. So you wait while they transfer you to someone of a higher rank. And then you have to repeat what you've already said. Do you have a guess as to how many times per year a typical caller says they've had a frustrating experience enough to make them hang up, and go to another company. That magic number is 13. 13 times people have hung up in frustration. And AI, Yuzu went on to say, they will only transfer you when you are about to explode. So the problem, the customer is stripped of agency. Callers are at the mercy of the IVR or call center staff to get what they want. IVR is a gatekeeper. It actively keeps callers from their goals. The process tests the limits of the caller's patience and resolve. Why does it always feel like you've won a prize when you finally get to a solution or even if you get through to an actual live agent? Should it feel like a prize? And it's very, very clear that the IVR is not on the customer's side. IVRs seem to be constructed to keep callers in their place. It's not there to make their lives easier. And open sources part in this whole issue. Platforms are propagated. I have voiced open source platforms for about 25 years and continue to voice them. And I do know that my prompts live on and get propagated into different systems. That's the whole idea of open source. But in doing so, mistakes get duplicated and things that are probably awkwardly worded and not very good about one system, unfortunately, will just get duplicated into other systems. Bad design then becomes the norm. So by the end of this presentation, hopefully you'll be able to do a few things. You will recapture that old school win-win feeling where the customer feels like they're winning and the company wins as well. You will educate your end users on the importance of not manipulating the customer for profit. And you will restore the caller's dignity. So let's break down each of those problems individually. Problem number one, the customer feels stripped of agency. The control is on the call center side and not on the customer side. The caller is at the mercy of the contact center or the IVR. Navigation through the IVR requires time and patience. And I think a lot of callers know that if they call, especially a large company 
or a big government agency that they have to pretty much bargain and set aside a certain amount of time to do that phone call. So they have a lot at stake. Caller is powerless. They're led like sheep through the IVR. Problem number two in depth, in which the IVR is a gatekeeper. The IVR feels elitist. I hate the prompt that says, we're busy giving other callers our legendary service. It kind of sets you apart from other callers and not in a good way. So it sets up almost kind of an elitist paradigm where the caller is wondering, who do you have to know to get service around here? The call center agent has veto power. So whether or not they actually have power, the call center agent pretty much has the ability, even though they often don't have much authority, they have the ability to shut down that transaction and say no to the customer. And the third problem is that customer questions the validity of their issue. If other callers are made to feel more important than you, you sort of wonder if maybe your issue isn't important. You wonder if you still really care about what it is you're calling in about. Breaking down problem number three, the process tests the limits and patience and resolve. So callers need to carve out time and should calling a company require time blocked out of your schedule, maybe a little bit, but as much as it usually is called for? Callers feel as though they're getting nowhere. They feel like they're at loggerheads with the agent. And it feels like you're at odds with the system. You're not imagining it if you do feel that way because the caller is in the position of proposing to the agent a solution and the agent is pretty much in the authority position to be able to say yes or no. IVR is patronizing. It often is putting the callers in their place and taking away their control. Problem number four, the IVR is not on the customer's side. Win-win is an alien concept, and it shouldn't be. Why can't the company and the caller work together to find a solution? It needs to be said that our target is actually the same. You want happy customers and repeat customers, and the customers want to come back and give you your business again. When the customer triumphs, everybody triumphs. I know it seems like an old axiom, but it's true. Keeping the whole customer versus getting a new customer paradigm is still very valid. As for open source developers and deployers having the power to change this, you can do so by working with your end user for whom you're implementing the phone system and educate them. So your end users probably aren't aware of the power of their IVR and are probably not using it to their full advantage, or they also may not see the harm in designing an IVR that alienates the caller. It's your position to educate them on that issue. Customize the IVR. The open source framework is a skeleton that can be used as a basic structure, and yet so much can be built on it to enhance the phone system. Be creative. This is your chance to improve open source telephony IVR at its grassroots. That gets back to the whole idea of once you design something in open source and set it free for the community to uh, use and enjoy, that becomes the new standard. So, of course, in open source, you are obligated and encouraged to share. Share your innovations with the open source community and therefore make IVR better by saying, we used to do it this way. This is the new standard. So here's kind of a little short list of things you can do to reduce caller frustration. Keep prompts short. The opening greeting in an auto attendant really should not ramble on for several paragraphs, and I have voiced ones that do just that. Make sure that you are considerate of the caller's time and try to keep prompts as short and as efficient as possible. Front stack the most frequently used or urgent prompts at the front of the menu and have the choices go down in descending order of importance. Don't make your choices too similar. I think we've all been in the position of listening to choices in an opening menu and thinking that what you're calling in is a little bit like choice number one, but it's also somewhat like choice number two. And what do I do? So make sure that your choices in your menu are distinct and don't sound too similar. 
Resist submenus. I'm not a big fan of them. So, in other words, if people make a choice in the opening menu, if they do, sometimes they are met with yet another little mini menu of the submenu. If you have to do that, make sure the submenu choices are limited to one or two choices. Again, try to simplify it and not create an experience where the caller is drilling down into several different submenus. Always offer live agent support. I've actually had clients that do not want to put a press zero for live support option. I think you should always offer an escape hatch for those callers who have not found in your menu the choice that they need and they actually need to fine tune it and speak actually to a live agent right away. I don't think it's going to be abused because people are pretty turnkey and they enjoy arriving at a solution on their own with their own choices. Don't make the caller work too hard. Again, this goes back to mm, designing multi-level IVRs that put the callers through their paces and make them really work hard to try to get to a, a solution. Try to make it as simple as possible. And above all, respect the caller's time and patience. Uh, it seems obvious, but if you kept that in mind, that the caller's time and patience are in short supply, that would go a long way to designing IVRs that are a bit more intuitive and easier to use. And as for companies deliberately making IVRs confusing so that callers will drop off and they won't have to issue a refund, yeah, we're just, we're not going to do that anymore. And we're going to discourage your customers from trying to improve their bottom line by just not offering any solutions at all. Thank you so much for watching. This is my contact information. Feel free to reach out if you have any comments about the presentation or if you need to start a dialogue about designing a better phone system for you or your end users. Thanks for watching.